My next lecture is going to be on prime numbers and what they mean. So basically a prime number, as we can see here, is a natural number greater than 1 that has no positive divisors other than 1 in itself. So basically, just like in my other lecture, prime numbers are all about unity. What do I mean that by that? Well, let's take a look at the numbers and what it's trying to say. So here I'll have the number 1, which by definition, 1 is not a prime because it has more than one divisor. Meaning that if I take 1 and I put it into itself, I could do that. But because I could take 1 and put it into itself, and 1 and put it into itself, and because the language of math goes to infinity, by the definition of prime, it's not prime, because that's the definition. It's only allowed to go in once. Uh, so it could go in infinite times. So I could just keep putting 1 and 1 and 1 and by the way, um, you know, numbers are just definitions anyway, so these are just concepts, uh, as we saw in the very first lecture on my series. So, one's not a prime because of that. If we look at two, two is a prime because if I have two and I take one and I put it into two, it works. And this actually should be two over here. If these two dots go into those two dots, it'll go in exactly twice. And I'll have nothing left over. Just picture another dot there. And so, because it's only, it's divided by one and itself only, it counts as a prime. I'm sorry about that mistake there. Let's go to number three. So is three a prime? Yeah, three is a prime because it's divided by 1, and then when I get to 2, it doesn't go into, 2 doesn't go into 3 exact number of times. But at the end, 3 goes into 3 exact number of times. So by 1 and by itself, with nothing left over, 3 is a prime. Let's look at 4. Is 4 a prime? Well, let's see. Well, it's divided by 1, like every number is. And when I go to 2, I can see that 2 goes into 4 exactly twice. 1, 2, and then again, 1, 2. So because of that, We'll go to 3, it doesn't work because I'll get 1 left over, and when we get to 4, it works. But because unlike 3, which only worked at the beginning and at the very end with nothing left over, with 4, I have this part that works, so it's not prime. So for 5, which is prime, so this one doesn't work, 5 is prime. So it should only work at the first instance and at the last instance. So let's take a look. It works there. And it's we have a leftover. Two, two. I'll have one leftover, so that's okay. And then we'll have two leftover. And, that, and we'll have one leftover. And we have none leftover. So we can see that we have none leftover here. And it's divisible by one and all other values, I have a leftover. So because of the leftover, it doesn't, it, uh, it's not a prime. Over here, I had no leftover, so it excluded it as a prime. Number six, same thing. They're all divisible by one. I go to number two, but two goes in and two goes in, so I'll have nothing left over here at the value of 2, and I'll have nothing left over here at the value of 3. So I have no leftovers here and no leftovers here 
in addition to the beginning and the end. So then 6 is not a prime because I have this problem like I did there. So we could see prime numbers are numbers that only have no leftovers at the very, be at, at the very end. Uh, if we go to 7, it's the same thing. Every number is divided by 1, so that's not a problem. If I go 2, I'll have a leftover of 1. If I go 3, I'll have a leftover of 1. If I go 4, I'll have a leftover of 3. If I go 5, I'll have a leftover of 2. If I go 6, I'll have a leftover of 1. And at the end, 7, I'll have no leftover. That's why 7 is prime, because only at it's divided by 1 and itself. No other numbers in between. Let's skip up to 21 and see the same issue. Let's see. Well, it's divided by 1. But then when I get up to 2, I'll have a leftover of 1. If we could calculate that out. Of course, it'll go in 10 times, but then I'll have that one left over. When I get to 3, because it goes in exactly 7 times and I have nothing left over, and when I get to 7, it'll go in 3 times and I'll have nothing left over. So then 21 is not a prime number. Because that's not the definition. It could only go at the very beginning and the very end. Whereas if I do 23, then it'll only work, it's divided by 1, of course, and no other number, all the other numbers will give me a leftover except for when I get up to 23. At 23, I'll have no leftovers, so it works at the very end. Because all other numbers, 2, 3, 4, I'll have something left over. Like if I try to put 2 in, It'll go in 11 times and I'll have one left over. Or I'll put in 3 and it'll go in 7 times and I'll have 2 left over. Or if I go in 4, it'll go in 5 times and I'll have 3 left over. Only 23, I'll have nothing left over. So it's number 1 in itself. So then what exactly is a prime number? And, you know, of course we could go up to infinity as here. We just keep going. Um... So, I mean, the pattern that you're going to find with primes is whatever you want it to be. Because the language is based on tens. Well, I could plot, I could plot out the primes if I want in a, lang in a pattern of tens. If I put 0, 10, 20, 30 along this axis, and I go over here, I'll put 111, 21, you know, 2, 12, 22. And I'll go around the clock in tens. When I get to the end, I'll be 20, 21. This is just going around in tens. If I plot it out, it'll come across on the diagonals, except for the first 10 digits. All the primes are going to end in 1, 3, 7, and 9, as we see here. It's just the way it is because of the language. If you look at all these things, you can see they all end in 7, 1, 3, 9, 9, 1, 3. So because I plot it out in a certain way, 3, 13, it'll, it'll go along these diagonals. If I plot it out on a circle, if I plot it out on a square, you know, I get a square configuration. Because all I'm doing is, is plotting out the language. It's not anything else other than that. So I'm showing the language base 10. And depending on what arrangement I choose is the pattern I'll see. So what's primes? Well, primes are just showing what values of unity are preserved. And pretty much prime numbers, you know, are the numbers at the, begin at, at the end points only, which is basically the same concept as on the previous lecture I was describing with ratios versus division, where unity is preserved. So the primes are the nodes of unity in the language of math. And pretty much as the numbers get larger, there are going to be more opportunities for the numbers bef before 
to enter into the other numbers. So they have to be more spread apart because there are more opportunities for other numbers to then go into the numbers before as they get larger. But because the language of math is infinite, there has to be infinite primes because we could count to infinity. So the primes will be more spread out. So basically, in conclusion, what are the primes? Well, the primes are the least common denominators of the, as you ascend towards infinity. So as you get higher and higher up the ladder, uh, you know, the next prime number is going to be when you get that definition fulfilled, when you have unity preserved, uh, you know, when this condition is met pretty much that no other number beforehand will be able to fit into it except when you get to that very last value. So you can see four doesn't work and six doesn't work, but seven works. But as you get up the ladder, there'll be more opportunities for numbers before to fit in. So they're going to be more spread out. And then depending on how you map, it's going to be the pattern. And, uh, and it's, it's going to be the least common denominator as you climb up the ladder. Uh, there'll be more opportunities for the numbers before to come in to your newly established prime number so they should get more spread apart uh, but they're going to be the least common denominator where unity is preserved and that you'll only get no leftover remainder that's what a prime is no leftover remainder at the end because all the values before you got three left you know for five for example it's divisible by one and divisible by itself at the end with nothing left over so it's unity there but all other values you'll get a leftover leftover of three leftover of two leftover of one you know this is a prime you know this is a prime so always a leftover except for the very end and like I said as the numbers get higher you'll have more opportunities here you can put seven in and three in with no leftovers, so that's not a prime of 21, but 23 is, because nothing will be. And here's the list of more and more primes. And again, how you plot it out is going to be the pattern you see. And it has to be infinite, because you can count infinitely. So eventually you'll come to the next prime number, just because numbers are infinite by the definition. You can count forever. So, um... I hope that explains prime numbers and uh, we'll have some other lectures uh, and thank you for joining me.